Hello, hello guys, it's me, the Metaverse Explorer. I'm back with another episode of Star Atlas. Now, um, there isn't much to talk about this time, but I know you guys like short videos, so I wanted to do a video just about some stuff in the Foundation Room. Now, the um, Titan Ships sales, we're going to have a look at that. We're also going to have a look at what's so confusing about the uh, Central Space Station and the, uh, the, the habitat and the claim stakes and... Look, guys, uh, in my opinion, like, I am an above average consumer of Star Atlas material. I don't understand it, okay? There's not enough information out there, or there's too little information out there. Um, so, I think, like, for someone who uh, consumes above average amount of Star Atlas material, and even creates Star Atlas material to try and educate other people about it, I should know what it is. But I don't. So I don't know if that's a failing on my side or if that's a failing on Star Atlas to properly educate this. Now, I know they're saying there's going to be more information coming out soon. So maybe we're just too early, right? Maybe we are just too early or maybe I'm just too early. Okay, let's end this. Um, this is just a nice little um, nice little uh, uh, like animated graphic from the Star Atlas core. Uh, did you get the magazine, by the way? Are you trying to solve the key of Iris? Trying to get the key of Iris. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and actually see what the ship sales are at the moment. This is brought to us by Aphia, of course. Welcome. Uh, thanks to Funcracker, Prometheus, Sensei Yamura. I'm sure they're... The, and, and actually, Victor and Sotugo. They're probably the, the, the guys that actually do this. I don't know specifically who's responsible for this. But this is looking at all the different ships that are currently um, on a heavy discount, like the 80% discount, um, and have a looking at what has actually sold, right? We have the Super Phoenix, 1 million. None of it has sold. PST-1, 1 million. None of it sold. Busan, none sold. We have the tank ship, though. People are buying the tank ship. So far, five tank ships have been sold. I think overnight, I think one or two more have been sold. So maybe like seven, give or take, right? The Busan Maiden Heart, 23 of them have sold, which is really impressive. Really impressive. The um, uh, D9, now the price starts going down. You see the numbers start increasing. The D9, four of them have sold. The Sunpa, not many have sold considering the price. Uh, uh, nearly $2,000. Only six of them have actually sold. The Fimble Mamba is probably the best buy on there at the moment because for the price and the, because uh, it's, a, it's a, I think it's a large, no, it's a medium ship. I think it's a medium ship um, and, it, and it is really, really well priced at $355. 163 of them have sold. So you can see that is the highest amount of actual. So you can see according to the, uh, the price wise, 56 million. That is a lot where people have, can actually, oh, I'm, I'm in the way. See, 56 minutes in one day, right there. So that is a really nice price point for a few people with a little bit of scrap left over on the side. They can still buy that. And then you keep going all the way up to the top is Busan Maiden Heart. That's where a lot of the rest of the money wow. is. And then you have the PSD6, of course, with only 69 million, uh, 29 million sold. Uh, it's $212. It's a repair ship. So not a lot of people are interested wow. in the repair pathway. So you can, you can see why it's not being sold. Now, guys, the Titans aren't being sold. Why? The Titans aren't being sold. Why? There are a million dollars to begin with, which sets up like 99% uh, of people in Star Atlas will not be able to afford this. Now, this was a major concern going in because I was like, well, why are you releasing something that's a million dollars if you're not sure someone is going to buy it? They're going to shoot themselves in the foot because if no one buys it, then everyone will think, oh, no, well, no one's buying these big ships anymore. Uh, so the small ships aren't going to be worth anything. So they're literally just going to start flooding the market with their ships and just leave Star Atlas. Like that's like, like that's like the probably worst case scenario, right? But there's all the middle part in between until we get there. The next reason why the Star the Titans probably aren't being sold is it kind of makes sense not to buy a Titan. Titans are huge ships by themselves, like one single ship. Yeah, it's huge, but in battle, it will probably be very useless. It won't be very nimble. Now, I know you guys are probably uh, uh, don't understand what I'm saying here, but uh, let me try and explain that more. So right, for the price of a Fimble Super Phoenix or a T1 or a Busan Last Stand, you can buy like a, a hundred, no, sorry, 50 tank ships. You can buy 50 tank ships. Let me try and work that out. 1 million divided by 20,000. You can buy 50 tank ships for the price of one Titan. Okay, 50 of them. That is a huge amount of tank ships, and they are already like beasts. Let's actually have a look at the ranking of the, of the pricing. So you can see the T1, also thanks again to Aphia. You can see the pricing of a T1, a Super Phoenix, and a Busan Last Stand. 
16,000 in firepower, 13,000 in firepower, 13,000 in firepower, and look at the tan ship, 5,000 in firepower. But, but, okay, look at this. You can buy, for the price of one Titan, you can buy 50 tank ships, okay? And one tank ship gives you a firepower of 5,000, whereas a Titan is a firepower of, let's say, average 15,000. So really, to equal one Titan ship, you only need three tank ships, right? Three tank ships, and you can probably take down or be at least equal footing to one Titan, right? Right? But for the pricing, you can buy 50 of them instead of one uh, Titan. So it, it makes no practical sense for you to spend a million dollars on a ship that only fits one location and you can only control one item where you can buy 50 tank ships, split them up into 10 squadrons, and 10 of them will definitely take down one PST-1, one Super Phoenix, and last night. And you can also have 50, uh, 40 other Titans, uh, 40 other tank ships in multiple different places. This is what a guild should be doing, right? Trying to control space. You need heavy firepower in lots of different places. You have to be nimble. So you can engage a Titan with 10 from the front and then come around with another 10 uh, uh, tank ships from the back. Okay, and that's only 20. And that's even less than half of the price it costs to get one Titan. Does that make sense? To me, it makes total sense. Like, I, if I had a million dollars, I would not be buying a Titan. I would be buying 50 tank ships. 50. Because look at the firepower. Uh, look at the, let's even look at the, uh, the, this is the price of firepower per $1. Okay, so every $1 you spend, how much firepower are you actually getting? For the PST-1, I'm going to zoom in so you can see. It's 0 0.003, which is a ridiculously small amount of um, firepower for every dollar you spend, okay? The Thimble Super Phoenix is even worse because we know the Super Phoenix is not supposed to be a, a, a heavy firepower ship. It's supposed to be like a luxury transport slash human, humanitarian ship. It's got 0 0.002 firepower per dollar, also very bad. The Busan Last Stand is also very bad, but we know the Busan Last Stand is like a kind of a defensive thing. But then you look at the tank ship, you're going to get 0 0.06 firepower instead of 0 0.003, okay? There's a whole decimal off there. This tank ship is way more bang for your buck. Uh, um, you get way more firepower for the dollar amount that you spend than you do spend for a Titan, okay? So if you're looking at it purely from a financial or purely from a combat uh, point of view, then it makes no sense to buy a tank ship, uh, to buy a, a, a Titan. It's more so for like the glory for the, oh, I have a, t I have a Titan. Oh yeah, I could do lots of this stuff. Oh, you know, we have, we can control this one single choke point only until like 10 tank ships turn up and then you're dead. So not really. Uh, and 10 tank ships will only cost you like uh, less than 150k, give or take. Yeah, so um, of course, this is not like the only uh, metric we should be using uh, as to make your decision to buy a Titan because, because um, first off, this firepower calculator, this firepower aggregate is only an estimate, right? We only got this from a, 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 a what do you call it? a report that came out that said you know uh, each tier um, weapon is uh, two point seven five more than the next one, uh, more than the last one, and and like it, it's. It's not very concrete um, uh, calculation. It's only an estimate for now, right? So you shouldn't put a lot of stock in this, but at the same time, it does give you an idea, okay? Um, this got me thinking, what was the best uh, re like reward for your, that's the best firepower for your money? And I remember the, uh, I remember I got myself a Calico uh, Enforcer uh, because I remember seeing the bang for my buck, which was very good. You can see a Calico Enforcer has our capital class weapon, uh, even though it's a uh, uh, medium fighter. It's got 11, 0.11 firepower per dollar spent. And then the Fimble Mamba is also not bad, 0 0.10. And then we can go down. I don't think there's anything else. I think there was X5 is probably the best one. There we go. The PSX5 has got six extra small hard points, but it's got 0 0.12 firepower per, back, uh, per dollar. So the X5 is the best bang for your buck at the moment, especially with the discounts at the moment. So this is like a, yeah, this is like a huge thing, right? I really hope someone buys one of these Titans. Otherwise, yeah, I don't want to say it's do or die, like I said in the last video, but it's pretty tight now, pretty tight. Like why release something so they're shooting themselves in the foot? It makes no sense to do this, right? Okay, let's go ahead and look at some foundation room stuff as to why I'm a bit confused about the habitats um, from uh, Star Atlas. So 
Uh, from uh, Craig's from Holograms, like, I just wanted to make sure that wasn't a typo that mining claims will have immediate score utility. Previously, it was just the thoughts, uh, thought utility in Sage. So remember, mining claims are coming already. They're going to be selling soon. Um, some of us from the Rebirth campaign already have mining claims. The My thought was that mining claims were part of the Sage because you'll need to go to a planet, stake your claim, and then uh, mine the resources from that planet. But now Michael came out and says, uh, correct. We have score implementation planned for mining claims. But I'm like, what? What? Uh, why? I thought, I thought score was just like what we have now. It's going to be deprecated in a few months from now. And then we're going to move it moving to Sage, like in its entirety. And then everything in Sage will come across. But I think, I honestly think the Startless team are backed into a corner a little bit here because it is the deep bear. And whenever they release something, they have to have utility for it. Otherwise, no one's going to buy it, right? There has to be something you can do with it. Otherwise, everyone will be like, mm, nah, I'm not going to, I'm just going to wait because I'm not going to do anything with it now. I, I need my money. It's a bear market. So I think, I, and, I, and I'm just speculating here, right? I think that they are releasing um, a utility for the mining claims in score just so it can have utility okay we know score isn't going to be lasting much longer like a couple more months and it'll start winding down because everyone will be going into sage so uh, yeah I, i'm like what, what do you guys think about this like do you think they're just giving us utility of the mining claim it's good that we get utility but at the same time it's only for a small amount of time i guess it doesn't really hurt because all of this is built on chain so like even if it's on chain you can use it for both score and sage so it doesn't really matter if they've just put it on chain. Any program can go ahead and use it. I, I guess so. I guess so. Right. Let's look at our nest thing. So um, um, Mustache Rider from AEP was like, is there going to be a sign up for DevNet st uh, Sage testing or more open testing? And uh, Mike was like, it'll be open to everyone with a wallet. So anyone who has a wallet in Star Atlas or even in Solana, you should be able to go ahead and uh, do the testing phase for uh, DevNet for Sage. And I'm really looking forward to this. I want to make lots of videos about uh, uh, the Sage itself, uh, how to go in, how to uh, uh, attack a, a, a star base, how to uh, do something, craft maybe, whatever the first implementations are. I really want to make some content on this and because you guys, I'm sure you guys want to see it. Some people will have time, some people won't have time. We'll just explore this together. But because like I'm said, I'm just like one of you guys. I just stand in front of a camera, make a few videos, and you guys are, <laughs> are likely uh, uh, like it. Um, one thing um, that is a bit confusing, right? This is a quote from a long a while ago, from the 13th, okay? Which is nearly like two weeks ago from this month. This is about the Central Space Station land, okay? And they're going to be going on sale very, very soon. And I'm going to quote him. Though presently, uh, CSS land is largely cosmetic, Okay, largely cosmetic. Remember, uh, largely cosmetic, but you do get a few bonuses like crafting bonus, and then you might get a ship as well, and then you get a, a little bit of inventory bonus as well. We need to dig deeper since we haven't really spent a lot of time formulating a plan, given we haven't intended to sell that real estate until we got closer to functional UE5 environment. So like I said, the team needs money right now. All of their plans that they had later on, that they wanted to release this Central Space Station land later on, they're bringing it forward. So now they have to rush to bring utility to a lot of these things. And this is exactly what he said. He said it's mostly cosmetic. We have to dig deeper to get more utility for this. Let's keep going. Someone asked uh, Michael about the, um, the, the pricing of the land. Uh, uh, of the CSS land specifically and what we can do with it, right? And he's like, oh, and someone asked about like, uh, how approachable will it be? Like, uh, is it gonna be like everyone can afford a land or only a few people can afford the land? Let's, let's read what he says. So lowest tier land, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. Lowest tiers will be approachable, much like the lowest class of ships. We still needed to dial in claim stakes, which is a bit complicated given we have existing inventory on the market distributed following the rebirth campaign. And what he's talking about is, yeah, you know, uh, during the rebirth campaign, you bought all those posters. Some of us actually did get land uh, uh, claim stakes in our inventory, in our wallets already. So when they're making this new economy, they have to factor in the already existing supply, which is us, which is what we have. But hey, that was their plan. They gave it out to us. So they have to now uh factor it in that's their job right we gave them money for that product they have to bring utility for that product right it's only natural uh so economics team can't go into this with a fresh model of course um it's you guys that gave them out in the first place 
can't give you uh, pricing on claim stakes yet. But again, the objective is to ensure a global community has opportunity to participate. Global communities. So that means hopefully like something sub $100. And then he's like, on the CSS plots, the base tier is $80. The base tier is $80. Though important to note that these are instance units like condos with no specific location in the CSS. Um, in this, in at least the sense of a saying a plot is XYZ is mine. So, um, to my understanding, okay, the base tier, which is will be tier zero, is going to be $80. And they're going to be instance, which means they're not going to have a physical location. Like, um, I don't know how to explain it. Like, you could have that same uh, one location, but it's in, you've decorated yourself. And then I could go into this small door and it's that same location, same door you went through, but now it's it's my, what it looks like to be mine. So you could have a billion, a gazillion instanced um, tier zero plots that, that only have like one door going through it. And then when you enter it, it's lots of different people's own uh, looking space, right? Those are the ones that are, instanced and then there are those that are not instanced they have a physical place that you can walk to like using your keys keyboard walk turn left turn right and then that's your spot okay that one is not instanced this is my understanding of it it's not instance so um i'll be able to have mine uh, in like um this address xyz this address xyz and you'll have yours over the corner and you're directly opposite me and people can physically go to them and it's not like they'll have a gazillion versions of it. It'll just be one. It's not instance. That's what my understanding is. T1 plots are all physicalized with a specific location within CSS. This is exactly what I'm saying, right? T1 will come in at sub 1,500. Whoa, 1,500. That is a huge amount for the smallest tier that has a physical location. I don't know if that's for a global audience, guys. A global community, as he's saying there. I don't think so. The plots scale fairly aggressively from there, given the highly scarce supply of larger tier plots. And if I remember correctly, the largest tier plots, like the penthouse tier plots, um, with a physical location of like $2 million. I'm like, oh, oh, $2 million. Are you kidding? Who's going to buy that? This game is like five, six, seven years away from actually coming out. When is the time are you actually going to be able to walk in UE5 to your physical location? Four years? You want to put down $2 million four years from now for a game that is struggling at the moment? It doesn't sound good, does it? It doesn't sound good. So if you want something that's even more liquid, uh, you can buy two times with that. Or you can buy 100 tank ships, for God's sake. 100 tank ships. And you can use those tank ships super early in score right now to earn Atlas. You can use it in Sage to go and beat someone, get some enjoyment out of it, and you can still have a liquid supply of them, okay? You have 100 tank ships, you can sell two, three, four, five, six. For a land, a, a, a penthouse land, $2 million, you have to buy, find a buyer that wants to buy just that one, and it's gonna be super, super, super difficult. So for me, the CSS plots are not looking very good, guys. Um, he's saying that they will be coming out with more information. Let's read this. Um, same Moonmonger. He's like, with uh, week one, 100% AD discount running out on Wednesday. Can you please confirm details for structures, utility, like pricing, all this sort of stuff? And Michael's like, uh, we will likely release pricing um, details prior to Wednesday. We just finalized the deep analysis last week uh, before the holiday break, and we should wrap that up on Monday. So to anticipate an announcement on Tuesday. Now, it's Monday my time, so Tuesday, tomorrow, or even the day after, we might get an announcement. Let's wait and see. Um, there is so much information that I think we need before we decide to go ahead and spend 1.5K on a tier one land that is physicalized and we might not even be able to actually physically go to in the game for like three, four or five years. Okay. It's a long time. It's a long time. Now think about it. Three, four, five years, 1.5K. Is it better to buy Bitcoin with that 1.5K? Uh, better to buy Ethereum? Which one do you think has the better risk to reward ratio? You tell me, guys, you tell me. Okay. And lastly, let's end with the picture showroom of the week. Number six, Schmacko. This is him with his uh, little, uh, not little, not little at all. This is the, uh, the giant dong, mosquito with a dong. This is the ATS Enforcer. Uh, really great ship, capital class weapon. You can see how big it is. It's like a jet with like a giant, giant capital class gun attached to the front of it, which looks like a mosquito dong.
All right, guys, that's it for now. I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you very soon. And make sure... Oh, I lied. I said this was a short video, but it's actually 20 minutes. I will see you soon, guys. Ciao.